Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me Sally and to the Crumbs and Doilies kitchen here in London where we are going cookie crazy sending out so many cookie orders at the moment that we're all basically eating, sleeping, dreaming about cookies, eating them for breakfast, lunch, dinner and now also dessert because we can't get enough of cookies and I have a great recipe for you guys for a really simple, quick but delicious dessert and it's for a skillet cookie and the best thing about it is that if you have a tiny little pan like this you can make it just for one and it's so cute but obviously if you don't have one of these you can still make it in a ceramic dish or a baking tin um, but this is just great because it gets really hot so you get a lovely crispy outside to your cookie we're gonna serve it with ice cream we're gonna eat it warm and it is delicious so let's get started what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna burn some butter you don't have to do this with burnt butter you could simply just melt your butter but I really think that burning butter is so it just adds such an extra layer to your cookie or to any baking it has a really rich nutty kind of flavor to it so we're going to start off with 55 grams um, of unsalted butter and I will give you some other options um, for sizes because I understand that this is really small so I'll do a double quantity for you guys as well in the description box below so first of all we're going to get that on to a nice high heat and we're going to keep stirring it around until it goes nice and golden and brown so because I'm using this little cast iron pan, I thought I might as well melt the butter in it. But if you're not using one of these, you can just melt your butter in the microwave or in a regular pan on the hob. And also if you are using a skillet pan, this is great because you're kind of like seasoning the pan a little bit with this burnt butter. So it is kind of worth doing it if you've got the pan. And this will only take about two or three minutes. You want to keep stirring it as you go so it doesn't completely catch and burn on the bottom. But what you'll get left with is this delicious looking golden brown kind of liquid butter. If we pour it in there, you can sort of see these little nuggets here, the little burnt bits. And that's you want all of those in there. So make sure you do scrape it all out. And obviously, if you are using a cast iron um, skillet like this, just be careful because the whole thing gets hot, so you don't want to just grab that handle because it's going to burn. Right, so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to add the rest of our ingredients into this bowl because I did actually try <laughs> the other day and mix it in the pan, but I made quite a lot of mess, so I'm taking it out and then we're going to put it back in. So to our butter, I'm going to add 65 grams of soft, light brown sugar. And give that a good stir just to combine it all and then we're going to add an egg but I actually only need half an egg so I'm going to crack my egg into this bowl and then I'm going to grab myself a little whisk or a fork and we're going to break the egg up first and that way we can just use half of it and the rest of it you can just cover and put in the fridge eat it for breakfast the next day, add it to a cake, whatever you want to do with it. So I'm going to pour half of my egg into the butter and sugar. And again, just stir that through to combine it. And as we add all of these ingredients, we are just combining, we're not beating or folding or anything fancy. We just want to get it all in and mix together. So next up is time for some dry ingredients. So we're going to start with some plain flour. And that's 75 grams going in there, along with some raising agents. So I've got a little bit of baking powder and bicarbonate of soda. They're both going in. And of course, I'm going to put in some salt because a cookie needs salt, guys. It's got to have a little bit of salt in there. So we're going to stir all of these through. And then I'm going to add some vanilla extract, which you don't have to use, but I do think that vanilla is a lovely kind of underlying flavor in all your bakes, that's cakes and cookies. So I'm going to go for a half teaspoon of that. And again, just giving that a good stir through before the final ingredient, which to me is the most important, and that is chocolate chips. You could add heaps of stuff to this. You could go crazy with like pretzels and nuts and stuff. I'm gonna keep it classic with chocolate chips, and I've gone for a mixture of dark and milk, and I've actually done this using a chocolate bar, and I've chopped it up because I really like the kind of irregular kind of shapes that you get from it, rather than your kind of standard chocolate chips. So I've got 75 grams in total. I'm not gonna add all of it, though. 
And once those are all mixed through, you want to grab back your skillet pan or get your baking tray or your ceramic dish, whatever it is that you're using, and we're going to put all of the batter into it. And once it's in, just give it a little smush around just to kind of even it out a little bit. But you know, it's quite nice when it's a bit kind of irregular and lumpy bumpy. And then you want to get the rest of the chocolate chips that we saved back and we're going to sprinkle them over the top. Because this is kind of a bit of a top tip. This is how you get your cookies looking like they do in people's photos, you know, <laughs> with the oozy chocolate all over them. So just sprinkle those over. And then before I put it in the oven, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt on top of mine. Just to add like when you bite into it you get that little hit of salt so you don't have to do this but if you've got some coarse salt or some um, sea salt flakes this is a great thing to use those for I'm just gonna sprinkle them on top all right so let's get this in the oven so mine is preheated to 180 degrees C that is fan assisted and I'm gonna put mine in for 10 minutes because I think this is best when it is almost a little bit too underbaked, really gooey in the middle, but if you want it a little bit further cooked, then go for 12 to 14 minutes. It'll be nice and golden on the outside. You can kind of press it around to see how gooey it is in the middle. All right guys, the cookie has been out of the oven for about five to seven minutes, just to cool it down so it doesn't burn the inside of my mouth. But I don't want to let this cool down completely because it is best served warm and gooey and the chocolate's all melted and I think with a load of ice cream on top. So I've got myself some salted caramel ice cream here and top tip for you for serving ice cream, if you want to get that nice round ball, is to heat up your scoop in a little bit of hot water and that's just gonna warm up your scoop so that when we put it into our ice cream, it's gonna scoop it out perfectly. Oh, I literally can't wait to eat this. Here we go, I'm just gonna dive straight in. I don't think I'll ever get bored of cookies. Mmm, it's so good. And the little bits of salt that you get that we sprinkled on top are perfect. Mmm, you're gonna absolutely adore this. And it's so, so quick and easy. If you make it for a dinner party, people are gonna be wowed and they won't have a clue how easy it was. So please make this, even if you're not having a dinner party, just make it for yourself because I think it's the perfect three in the afternoon treat. <laughs> so let me know how you get on over on Instagram. Use the hashtag, hashtag Cupcake Gemma, so we can all see and share your photos. And if you want to get yourself some crumbs and doilies, freshly baked next day cookies, then head over to cupcakegemma.com or crumbsanddoilies.co.uk and you can order yourself some there. If you don't want to do that, then make yourself some or make yourself some of this delicious dessert. Mm.